we are going, Bert and I are going to have a little chat. So, yeah. Dale, can you go ahead and mute yourself too? Thanks. So just as a quick introduction, um, as I like to tell people, I have known Bert and shopped with him since he had hair. <laughs> um, so, funny and, <laughs> and um, I, as a disclaimer, I have worked with Bert on uh, his shows and in his shop. So we have a long history together and um, I would like to think a pretty decent working relationship too. So, so Bertram Zinkwell has been in business for 35 years in the suburbs of Washington, DC, selling anything that writes, as Bert will tell you, as well as paper goods and of course, ink and ink refills. Um, you can see the famous wall of refills behind Bert right now. Um, so thank you, Bert, for joining us. Welcome. So where is the physical shop currently located? Uh, in Rockville, Maryland. It's actually been within a few, within a 16th of a mile from the original shop. We started in a shopping mall called White Flint Mall in 1985. We were there for 12, 18 years, no, 28 years. And then when the mall got torn down, we moved across the street for six years. And then a year ago, we moved to our current location at a um, an open air shopping center right on Rockville Pike, the main thoroughfare from Louis Washington North. Wow. Yep. So, yeah. And at one point in time, you had other locations as well. Yes. Correct? Um, back in um, in the White Flint days, the early shopping mall days, I became very good friends with someone everybody knows, Jim Rouse, and he and I were just, you know, I was a customer of his buying shoes. And I always told him I wanted to open up a store in Baltimore. Jim wanted to get out of the shoot business. So we opened up at 111 East Baltimore Street in 1992, um, downtown Baltimore. Uh, very successful in the early years. And then we moved to another location when the building we were in was to be torn down, where we stayed for another 10 years. Never really got uh, behind the internet thing back in the early days, even though we had a website. But we were still in the shop brick and mortar type business. Uh, then in the late 90s, we expanded by purchasing a, a store in a mall in Washington, D.C., um, another store in Columbia Mall in Northern Maryland, which was a former Colorado Penn store, and then opened our fifth store in Dulles Town Center, which was a shopping mall that had just opened near Dulles Airport in Virginia. And that proved to be pretty demanding, and uh, eventually we closed all four stores down. And I'm still back to where I started in 1985 with the one store. Okay, very good. So you've seen, obviously over this time period, you've seen a lot of shifts and changes in pens and ink and, you know, so many different things. So let me ask the question, what was in the inkwell when you first started, since this is Bertram's inkwell, and what's in the inkwell now? Literally and figuratively. Well, of course. The, the, when I first opened, there weren't that many brands even to sell in the pen business. We're talking about Mont Blanc being um, kind of a newcomer to the scene. You know, the original business plan was Cross, Parker, Schaefer, St. Dupont was the high end one, Lamy and Waterman and Mont Blanc. Whereas most people hadn't heard about the the Watermans and the Mont Blancs that were you know buying pens. Then as the '80s. 86, 87, uh, Montblanc came out with their famous ballpoint pen and their rollerball, and we were selling, you know, just stacks of them. We couldn't get enough of them. Montblanc didn't have enough uh, uh, outlets to even sell the pens, so we were just, you know, just printing money as we call it back then. It was just unbelievable. Mostly ballpoint pens, uh, not much with the. We did sell fountain pens, but it was mostly ballpoints. And then as the, um, as the ballpoints got tiring for a lot of um, pen people, if you will, there weren't really even called pen people back then, uh, in the 2000s or the 90s, um, these companies started coming out with limited editions and uh, rode the wave of limited editions from the, from the 90s up into 2000. I mean, it was just an incredible ride with, you know, Mont Blanc making limiteds every year. Delta came into the scene. Omos was strong. Aurora, Monograph, all of them. And price just wasn't an issue. It was just incredible. Uh, we were selling pens. 
but then moving forward, we didn't really focus on finding new customers, younger customers, uh, because we were selling, you know, thousand dollar pens, you know, on a regular basis. So that we kind of created a vacuum with that, with the lower end Lamy's and the well, Twisby didn't exist, lower end Lamy's and pilots and things like that. And the new company started coming in and, you know, capturing that market. So uh, that's the change in the pen business. When I was started, it was all about high end, collectible, expensive fountain pens and ballpoints for that matter. And we really didn't pay attention to the, the lower end stuff. But today, what it looks like is a strong mix of a lot of that and a lot of those older pens coming back to the shop where we sell estate pens where we buy pens back from people where we trade pens you've been collecting pens for five or ten years and you've got all these pens that you don't use but you really want that new pilot 823 or a, a you know a limited edition from somebody so we make a deal where you trade the pens in give you credit for them and you apply it towards the new purchase oh thanks sir. okay okay so you're you know you you've seen this shift out mm -hmm. of the pens that you're selling new lately, what what have been maybe the three most popular ones that you're seeing? And that can just be like within the last year or so. Um, we do very, very well with Lamy. It's a big brand. Um, you get not expensive. You know, most expensive Lamy is $250 for the Lamy 2000. Um, on the low end, I would say Retro 51, uh, which is a great brand. Unfortunately, they're closing down operations, which means as for a retailer, you know, I don't have anything for $25. That's such a good gift. So that's a bit of a problem. Um, I do very well with Aurora. I do very well with pretty much everything from Monteverdi, from Yaffa brands, Conklin, Monteverdi, stuff like that in the mid-range prices. And a newcomer, Esterbrook, actually. You know, that's a, that's a good one, too. Right. Okay. All right. So... I think by now, most fountain pen fans are aware, at least a little bit maybe, of the connection between Organic Studio Inc. and Bertram's Inkwell, and how Organic Studio founder Tyler Thompson worked for you. So yep. what do you remember of those early inky experiments that uh, Tyler did? Um, and that first bottle, it was Bert's Blue, wasn't it? Yep, something like that. I, that I don't honestly remember, but um, Tyler would come by the shop in the evenings mostly when I wasn't there. It was since we were in a mall, we were up until nine thirty, and um, I started hearing from the employees that this this kid keeps coming in the shop and he loves pens and he's really smart and he's a nice guy, and we need you always need help. And I said, well, who is he? And they said, I don't know. He just kind of comes and goes, and he's you know plays with pens and then he leaves again so i got to talking to him and again yeah he's tyler's still to this day a great guy a nice guy and um he told me that a teacher of his a professor i guess at the university of maryland showed him a fountain pen and he thought that was really cool so he started coming by the shop when he had time hanging out you know bought a little bit here and there um and then we get to talking and talking and then finally he decided you know you know how about you know part-time work here so we gave him a job, and of course, as time went by, he heard about a brand called Noodler, Noodler's Inc., which I'm sure everybody's heard of. Big brand out there, very successful. And Tyler said to himself, well, I'm a chemist. You know, I can make that stuff. And Organic Studio Inks were born, and uh, it was very successful right off the bat. Uh, to this day, it's very successful. We sold quite a few bottles today. And... Um, when he went to graduate school, the uh, the university that he went to was like, you can't be making ink on the side and, you know, going to school because you, you know, we're paying the bills. So you, you, you need to be focused completely on school. Um, so he had to shut down his ink business for, I guess, a couple of years. Uh, but now uh, he has a house uh, of his own where before he was making the ink at home, I should have said. And his mother was not too happy about that. You can imagine what mess that is. <laughs> and he's got a barn out back and they make ink and he sells ink all over the world. And I can attest to that. We had a customer in China that, you know, bought a lot of ink from us over the years. So it, it goes all over the place. Yeah, he's the, I would say he's the brainchild of the sheening inks where you get the, uh, the variances of colors and stuff like that with his nitrogen. 
of you know hundreds and hundreds of bottles that we've sold of that stuff. It's just a very successful brand for us. Wow. Wow. He's had a baby so, girl, so he's home more, so the ink ships a lot faster than it used to. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot that yeah. forgot that he is now a, a dad. So that's yep. great. Um so I, you know, now we can if you're up for doing a little tour of what's there in the store, um, unless you have somebody in there. You know what? I'm gonna I as much as I hate to say it, I've probably I've got about six people in here right now, so it's gonna be very difficult. Okay, well then let's not do that. If you want to so, like move along or something, I can come back or. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, um, any new products uh, that you've brought in recently that you're pretty excited about that you can tell us about, or you have um, any new new stuff? Um, nothing really. Uh, that's been very quiet in the new pen market. Uh, um, Aurora came out with their Cento, which is a uh, a high end hundredth anniversary fountain pen. Uh, we've only gotten a couple of those. We sold right out of those. But again, the the exciting stuff that we've been getting in are the are the trade ins. Uh, we've gotten um, a customer that's been selling us the Omos Unicef fountain pens from I think 1993. Uh, we picked up a couple of those silver today, uh, solid gold. Uh, today I picked up a Mont Blanc, uh, um, Peter the Great, Charles the Great, Peter the Great, Peter the Great fountain pen, and then. What's really interesting, a company called Delta that you know is long out of business. We have this. Let me see if I can put this thing on here. Um, Back it up a bit more. Okay, Hans Christian Andersen pen. So if anybody out there knows this pen, I'd be interested. This version here is solid black. It's a lever fill with little diamonds on the clip. They made three hundred of them. But then also, we got what appears to be a celluloid version of the same pen where they only made 50 of them, but it doesn't have the diamonds on the clip. So this is something, you know, I usually have an answer for everything, but I certainly don't know everything. <laughs> and uh, this is a pen I've never seen before. So that's kind of cool. Oh. Uh, Pelican M101 in the 1935 Lapis Blue came to the shop today. Um, on SD DuPont Medici came in the shop today. Even a, um, uh, an Acme monopoly rollerball pen came in today which is kind of funny because monte grappa is going to be introducing the monopoly fountain pen and rollerball um probably in about a couple weeks which is a very high-end rollerball and fountain pen like four or five grand for either one of those in two colors and when you say monopoly are you mean oh, I'm the, sorry, game? Monopoly, the game Hold okay on, monopoly pen wherever it is over there okay the monopoly pen the little box black box so, um, you know, Acme came out with this pen. Nope. Well, if he finds it, I'll, uh, I'll bring it over. Okay. Um, but Mono Acme is a um, kind of a step up of Retro 51. You know, instead of 25 to $50, their pens are 65 to about $100. You know, very colorful, bright, fun pens. And they made a limited edition called Monopoly after the game. Uh, that they sold out, and from what I understand, it's quite collectible in the secondary market. Um, but now Monte Grappa has come out with a Monopoly fountain pen and rollerball in two different color themes, like a red and a green. But you know the prices are you know tenfold from that. Okay, okay. So you've talked about the pens that come in on consignment, right, mm -hmm. or the trades, mm -hmm. or whatever. What? How would you break down the percentage of your business with like new pen sales or gently used pens? Uh... Oh, that's very good. I mean, it's 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 a it's an exciting part of this job because I sell pens like this Hans Christian Anderson that you can't even get anywhere. It's very competitive. Uh, but again, the the, the trade ins and all that can't be can't amount to more than maybe twenty percent. 15 to 20, 15 percent of the overall business. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, are you running any um, specials right now, either for the Detroit Pen Show weekend or other things that you can tell us about? I don't have anything. To, didn't plan anything for the weekend. No. Uh, but needless to say, if, if anybody has any interest in any pens that I mentioned, you know, I'm always, you know, more than willing to work with them. Uh, we will have some uh, Black Friday, Black Weekend, if you will call it that, specials, which will be announced next week. Okay, very good. 
Well, I will open things up to anybody who wants to as a question for Bert, you can put it in the chat window. Um, and it looks like somebody has already bought a few Organic Studio inks from the website. So, hey, that's great. Oh, well, thank you for that. That's great. Um, so if you have any questions for Bert, we can put those in here. I don't know if he's going to be able to do kind of a more live Q and a after this, um, depending on, you know, if you've got people in there spending money, I mean, I, I totally understand if you got to go, oh, we, got, we got people here. We're okay. So, okay. Um, you. but, um, yeah, I, you know, I think a lot of people who have gone to a physical show know that, you know, you're the person to come to for refills and we see a good bit of those refills behind you. So, um, it's folks can find them for a Parker style and, uh, what are the other styles that are available that they can come to you for? I have, I have a lot of refills. <laughs> um, the best way to put it. I've got refills that that'll fit pens that I don't carry. Uh, we had a, quite a bit of that today where people came in needing refills for, you know, watch pens, if you will, with, you know, clocks on them from, you know, 30 years ago. I was able to help the gentleman with that. Um, a lot of these uh, older Italian pens have small refills or odd shaped refills. Cartier made a lot of pens with weird refills. Uh, we've got, you know, if we don't have the refill exactly, we've modified refills, cut them down to fit the pen. And if the pen doesn't, the pen, the refill's too small, we've extended refills to make them fit as well. So a, a big part of the business has always been just helping people find refills for their pens. Uh, bought it here or not, of course, it doesn't matter. You know, my goal is just to help people. So they got a nice pen and they, you know, they go to Staples, they go to Office Depot, they try online. They don't really know what they're looking for. But they come in here, it, pretty, the success rate is pretty good that I'm able to uh, get them a refill. Or if they email or call, you know, they'll take the old refill and tape it to a ruler and send me a picture. And again, most of the time I'm able to help them out, fortunately. Okay, that's cool. Okay, Emma, who um, was one of our uh, vendors at the show, this I think it was this year, she's asking, Bert, what inspired you to start to the BWI pen show? because I had a lot of people come to me saying that I should do something with the DC pen show and that there's enough room for another show. And I found the furthest out months before and after, which was March and decided to open up another pen show. Um, also, I had a store in downtown Baltimore for many years and I always wanted to get back to my Baltimore customers, which are still very loyal and still come. A lot of them still come see me. One of them did today, actually, and picked up a very nice Aurora. So, you know, I've always had a, a you know, a hankering for Baltimore. So they're, they're having a show in Baltimore, plus the frustrations people are having in D.C. We decided just to have like basically two shows in the DMV every year. I do one and the others would do the other one. Yeah. Yeah. With and you, help, of course. Uh, well, thank you. That's very kind of you. And Emma is a Baltimore customer and she sends her love and thanks for all that you thank do. You, Emma. So, and I do know a few other Baltimoreans who, you know, have got their early starts. Uh, I know Chris Roth over at Write Notepads told me that Jim Rouse was one of the first to help him finding, uh, you know, some good pens uh, when he first started out. So, um, know a few other folks, Johnny Gamber up here with the race of the sure. podcast. Yep. So, pen so, Hey, we can talk about that a little bit, you know, uh, this is a pen show, but you know, it is about anything that writes as well. And Absolutely. we know you're carrying pencils now as well. Um, yep. are you, what pencils are you excited about these days? Oh, uh, black wing, black wing, black wing. <laughs> I mean, Faber Castell makes great pencils. Karen Dosh makes unbelievable pencils. But at the end of the day, the Blackwing pencil just has a a, a, a quality. The, the scent of the cedar, the, you know, the the quality of the pencil is just unbelievable. And if you use it, you'll you'll, you'll understand. Um, Faber Castell and Karen Dosh are more utilitarian, I think, pencils. Some of them are quite nice, but the Blackwing with the sharpeners and the California cedar is just just the most amazing instrument pencil instrument you can hold awesome awesome 
So what about um, the paper products you have as well? You, I know you have quite a selection of journals and uh, yep. uh, ads. Paper, paper products, you know, it's, um, you know, being in the, you know, I started this business, not, I started a passion for pens when I was in a Hallmark store and I was running the pen counter. Uh, that's how I started this whole thing. And then one of the, par one of the Parker pen salesmen said for me to open up a pen store. So, of course, that was in the, you know, the early 80s. Moving forward, working in the pen card shop all those years, I've got a thing for, for cards as well. We actually have greeting cards here in the shop. I can't get them out. You know, I just got to have greeting cards. So we have very nice quilling cards, uh, you know, $10 cards, all handmade, you know, swirled paper is what the quilling process is. We do very well with those. Uh, New Yorker cards, and then some other, you know, lighthearted cards. As far as stationery, uh, we do the Rossi papers from Italy, which is really neat because we place our order. Uh, they're going to they pack a container four to five times a year. Uh, the order is wrapped and packed with a UPS label in Italy for here. It's put on the container, comes, comes across the ocean, and uh, the container gets opened up and sent to UPS, and we get our package you know, a couple of days later. Uh, Rodia, of course, is a really big brand of paper for fountain pen lovers um, and journalers. We have all their, pa not all their pads, but a lot of their pads and papers, journal books, stitched, uh, hardbound, all kinds of stuff. And then just recently, we picked up the Leuchtturm brand, which I'm really happy about. Uh, Leuchtturm is a, is a phenomenal paper in that it's not glassy and smooth like Rodia, but since it's a little more porous, your ink is drawn from the from the nib better. It, it, it pulls it out. It sucks it out better. So I think you get a much better write with the Leuchtturm paper. I absolutely love that stuff. And then Execlair has um, other, you know, stationary products, um, you know, writing papers and stuff like that. We have Tomo River pads and things like that. Um, I think Tomo River writes very well. It's a great paper, but for me, it's just too thin. Um, not my favorite. But still I, very popular. Yeah, I like Tomoe River for uh, letter writing, personally, because it's so lightweight. It's mm -hmm. not going to have more weight, especially if you're writing international mail. So so folks can get Tomoe River from you now, too. Yep, yep. Oh, great. Excellent. Um, does anybody have any other questions that they want to ask Bert about, you know, maybe consignment pens? If you're looking, you know, he's a great resource for if you're looking for a specific pen, you know, that you haven't been able to find, um, highly recommend you, you know, reach out to him either here through the meeting or um, contacting him directly at the shop through bertramsinkle.com. I know uh, Dale's on there. So do you ship to Canada? Absolutely. I sold a, a, a retro cat rescue two yesterday to Canada and the customer emailed and called and said, you really have, or the email, do you really have it? I said, I absolutely have it. And he was just so happy. I sent him the tracking number. And so, yeah, we shipped to Canada, really all over the world. There's just certain countries that it's not safe to ship to because a lot of times things just disappear. But generally speaking, all over Europe, Australia, you know, just about anywhere. Wow, very good, very good. Um, what else can I ask you? Um, I see... Actually, I can see the corner of something that was made for you uh, for the pen show last year, which was a, uh, a calligraphy sign that was done by Nick Pang. Um, and then your and then Rebecca that? Robbins, your sister-in-law, uh, did the frame, right? Is that right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, that's sat on the front desk of the pen show. I think. Uh, I wish I could figure out how to turn this thing around, oh, but I just can't. I don't want to disconnect. So. So. Okay. okay. Good. Um, so I'll go ahead and I'll, um, you know, Dale, if you can uh, give people permission to that they can chat and turn on their video, that would be great. Um, and if anybody's got any specific questions for Dale or for Bert, you know, you can ask him now. Um, you know, he carries a, a high number of lines. I feel like I still know all this information from having worked with you for so long, but it's like, you know, he carries Diplomat brand who, I, you know, people who know me know I, I love that brand. Um, well, Waterman. Of course, they're all on the site. Um, Aurora, Bolograph, Karandash, Conklin. Conway Stewart, Cross, David Oscarson, Diplomat, Esther Brooks, Faber-Castell, Fisher, 
I mean, we carry most of the, you know, the most popular, I was just reading it off the website, uh, the most popular brands. And, um, you know, like Mont Blanc, we're not a Mont Blanc dealer, but um, we've got a lot of um, contacts in the industry so that we get all the Mont Blanc that we want. Yes, we've got some Bonaverdi. Okay. Here's the Mont Blanc. So, yeah, you can turn on your cameras if you like. You can uh, ask a question. We just ask that you, you know, be respectful of others and polite. Uh, but um, how was the turnout for Oscarson today? Uh, we had a great day. You know, he flew in last night, uh, had dinner with his daughter and new son-in-law and came out this morning. And uh, we had, you know, a nice, it was very busy this morning. And David was very pleased with the uh, performance. So okay. it was a good day. Uh, his stuff's just is off the charts, yeah. as, as we all know. I mean, it's absolutely he's stunning. He's approaching so. $6,000. So how does, that, how does that work exactly, that you're an authorized retailer for him? Yes. Okay. So okay. David, so. doesn't, David doesn't sell direct. So okay. if you call David and say, I want to buy your pen, um, you would he would ask you, well, who do you do business with? Uh, Bertram's, Pen Boutique, Farney's, FPH. And you'd say, I do business with, you know, whoever. And then he would put you in contact with that dealer and make the deal happen that way. Okay. okay. So it's nice that he protects his dealers. A lot of the uh, uh, distributors these days are selling direct, which is a real problem for some of us dealers. Uh, I would think so. So, but so if anybody is interested in finding out more about, you know, purchasing David Oscarson, they can, you know, oh, yeah, we actually contact just, uh, you. Um, my, my, my associate Adam just uploaded a ton of stuff on the website. So we've got a lot of, probably one of the most current collections of Oscarsons on the website. Okay. Very good. Very good. Um, yeah, you folks are welcome to ask any questions. Let's see. Yeah. Emma's, you know, very thankful for you being here. You know, we're hoping some pen meetups. Do you have any? It's always fun to have you guys here. You know that. Yeah. Do you, um, have any announcements you want to make so far related to Baltimore for 2021 or not? No. Nope. I sure don't. Uh, and trust me, it's on my mind daily being in the pen business. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know, especially now with the, you know, we have now have a sign on the door, uh, limiting customers in the shop. We've got, you know, the constant masks. Uh, so it's got to get, got to get through another six weeks of this before we can determine anything. Unfortunately, because people need to make plans, but, you know, it's just it, it's just too much to make the commitment. Then things get worse and then be tied into something like that. OK, it looks like Ted has a question for you. Yes. So go ahead, Ted. Yeah. Hi, Bert. I, I used to haunt the uh, B Street and the White Street stores when uh, I spent a lot of time in Baltimore. Nice. I still have several pens, including a Conway 58. But I've always wondered, were you the original person to bring Conway Stewart into the U.S.? Uh, that was always my impression from uh, from Jim. Yep. We were, um, there was a, a fella named, I'm pretty sure Jim Marshall. And Mr. Marshall was an English fella that kind of, you know, would travel back and forth, I believe. And he had ties with Don Yendel, who was the one who brought the line back. Um and for whatever reason, that didn't work out, or maybe Jim just brought some pens in to try it. Uh, but then, yes, uh, Baltimore Import Company started, and Jim Rouse, uh, Ken Jones, and myself uh, started distributing Conway Stewart um, in the U.S. And we traveled to New York to pen shows, uh, trade shows, excuse me, not just pen shows. Uh, we did a lot of business with FPH, did a lot of business with Bittner out in California. And Levengers when they were when they were big, um, we sold a lot of pens to them too. Yeah, those were no, that was before bespoke British, right? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. That was before Conway went to bespoke British pens, correct? Correct, correct. Yeah, it was it was a, a fellow named Don Yandel, um, quite an entrepreneurial. He was a wild man. Uh, when you go to these trade shows with him, you I mean, you didn't just finish at the end of the day; he kept you up all night. But um, he, the, 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 the British government, they had a program, whereas if you found a brand like that that had been shut down or out of business, I don't know what happened with Conway, but he resurrected it and they financed him quite heavily 
to build that brand back up. Uh, and once it was up and running, he sold it to the, I guess it was to Bespoke. And, you know, that's where it is now. But there's also a company in the U.S. making Conway Stewart pens at, at the same time. So, you know, I've lost touch of with all of the, you know, the legalities of what happened to the brand. So, Aaron, I understand you have a comment or question for Bert. You should be enabled now. One second. What? 113001. Hi, Bert. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I just wanted to say hi and tell you that I missed the days when you carried all of those wonderful high-end pens that I bought from you. In fact, I remember, I think one of the very first ones was the Delta Pompeii that I got mm -hmm. from you at the Washington, D.C. Pen Show in 1996. So Bert and I go way back. Way back. We go way back. And since then, I've bought some magnificent pens from Bert almost all of them at the Chicago Pen Show, which yep. I, re re regrettably none of us were able to attend this year. So I just wanted to thank you for everything that you've done over the years and for all of the wonderful pens that I've, I've bought from you. But I, I, I wish you still carried some of those. I, I know the market has changed, obviously, but uh, I'm still, and you know me, I, I'm, I'm usually interested in very, very interesting artistic pens, but- Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So that's all no, I wanted thank to you say. for your support you. over the years. It was always nice at the Chicago Pen Show, yeah. as you, as you as you hemmed and hawed about which one to buy and which what to do, but you always left with a nice pen. So it was uh, it was good times for sure. Anyway, it's great seeing you, and thank you for doing this, and thank you, Corinne, uh, also for organizing this because this is our only connection. You know, during this pandemic, everything, so many of these shows have been canceled and we don't know what 2021 is going to look like. So this is a great opportunity to at least have some kind of connection with other pen people. So thank you. Agreed. Uh, thank you. Yeah, Dale, you know, he, you know, we were, we were talking early on when things were starting, you know, he's the chef runner for Detroit Pen Show. And we said, you know, okay, let's see, can we do something virtual? And you know, we did a lot of research and testing and trying to, you know, figure out how can we make this work, um, you know, because, and I keep saying this over and over today, you know, it's so important right now for us to support the small businesses like Bertram's Inkwell, um, the, the pen makers, and, um, you know, all the little independent businesses, because so many of them are struggling because of the pandemic. So, um, you know, and I know Bert has been there, you know, Bert, maybe you want to tell us a little bit about, you know, kind of how the pandemic shifted business for you since March. Oh, yeah, sure. It's like everybody. I mean, brutal. Um, you know, when the, when the government said to the government, the, the governor says you got to close your close your doors. You can't let anybody in. You really start to panic. Um, I'm a brick and mortar shop. Um, I have people in the shop right now. Um, that's, that's what I do. I wait on customers happily and my internet business, as I've said it many times, not to offend the ladies out there, but I say it's not enough to keep a bored housewife busy because we just don't do that much online. Um, while grateful for all my online business, it's just, it's not a, a major part of the business, probably you know, 10 or 15% at the most. It's just not much. <laughs> Uh, grateful for it. We continue to try to do more and more. We've done a lot more with blogging and all that kind of stuff to to to, to get it better. But there's some uh, there's some giants out there that know what they're doing with video and all that. I can't even turn my phone around so I can show you everybody my store. So that's how pathetic I am. But um, I was here every day with with through the pandemic. Normally we're open nine to six Monday through Friday. During the pandemic, I was in the store, but the door was locked from ten to four answering the phones, answering emails, and doing whatever online business I could. Uh, when they loosened things up, of course, you know, we loosened things up, started to open up the doors with shorter hours. You know, we've got all the social, you know, protocols and all that with the distancing, uh, hand sanitizer and all that stuff. So we're doing everything we can in that regard. And now we're kind of open, but I've got a, a sign on the door with a maximum capacity of 10. Uh, my son's with me today, you know, kind of take, taking temperatures and you know making sure that we don't have too many people in the store but i'm definitely ready to the good old days uh when ammo you were here with uh, with the dc pen crew that time 
and the place was literally packed with 40 people. I mean, it was crazy in here. Mm-hmm. And that's the kind of brick and mortar fun that I, that I look forward to getting back to. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, uh, yeah, you know, Heather's mentioning there's nothing like a brick and mortar store. And I completely agree, you know, especially with pens and paper and ink, it's so important to be able to see something and hold it in your hand. How does it feel? How does it look? How do you like writing with it? Well, yeah. Remember, Corinne, when you were, you know, helping out in the shop in the old place, you know, you made that all those beautiful swatches of all that ink. Oh, yeah. um, you can't Are they still somewhere. Can you find them now? I mean, oh, yeah, not, that you, not that I'm asking you to go look for them, but, you know, I remember every once in a while you tease me and say you threw them out. <laughs> Never. Cole, when you're done, I need those ink sample things on the ink shelf, please. I'll, I'll get them for you in a minute. Oh. But again, when you come to like today, I had a couple young ladies in here uh, and they were looking at the ink. And I said, hey, if you want to see any of those inks, let me know. And we open up any and every bottle and swap a piece of paper on it so you get an exact swatch of exactly what you're looking at. You know, no computer can replicate the, the label or anything like that. It just doesn't work. But we, um, we, you know, we dip a few tips or pieces of paper into the bottle and give people an exact swatch of what they're looking to buy or not. Yeah, and you're the one that taught me the way of, you know, doing a great swab was to, you know, tip the bottle over. Yep onto the page the and then you just kind of get, sometimes you get a, a good ring or sometimes a good smear on there. Yep. Um, so. yeah, it depends how well they fill the bottle. Sometimes some of these uh, local or the smaller ink makers will uh, not fill the bottle all the way. So it's a little more difficult, but. Yeah, and then there's other ones uh, that I can think of, but maybe I won't name their names that overfill and you're told you have to be really careful when you open it. <laughs> oh yeah. So. So what we're, are the, we've got the splotches on the floor here of ink bottles that have dropped and made a mess. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, what, what ink brands are you carrying right now for fountain pens? Sure. Um, I am definitely not in the ink business uh, like others. I mean, there are people out there, you know, the Goulet's, the Anderson's, uh, Van Ness that just have literally every brand, Pen Boutique, every brand, every bottle available to them. Um, I'm very big on Dye Mine. I love it. Uh, we are always big with private reserve, Darla, rest your soul. Uh, we will be continuing private reserve with Yaffa come December, early December. Uh, of course, organic studio. I've got, uh, Dimeen, uh, Infant inks, the new Laban inks have done very well. Um, uh, pedal, the, uh, Edelstein, um, Grafa, well, Hiroshi and Zuku myself. too, right? Oh, and the Rizuku. Yep. Yeah. And of course, okay. uh, Tachia and Mont Blanc. Uh, okay. But again, there's so many of them out there. But, you know, when I started this business, we had black, blue and blue, black, maybe some red and green and purple and turquoise. And that was it. Uh, ink was just not even in the radar when I started this thing. But, you know, really, I give all the credit to Pride Reserve, uh, the original. Um, you get those swatches. The ink swatches from the refill wall. Um, Pride Reserve was the one that c- came out with multiple colors of ink. Um, you know, other companies had it, don't get me wrong, but Pride Reserve was the first one, I think, that marketed lots of different colors. And it was just phenomenal in the early days. It was the only ink company that had lots of different colors. Now everybody. Yeah. yeah. Um, Marion is asking, is the Laban ink on the wet or the dry side? That's a really good question. I haven't used it, so I don't know. It would be the, the safest answer. Um, I, again, I'm not in the ink business per se, so I really don't know what represents a dry ink versus a wet ink. If you write with a extra fine nib on porous paper, it's going to dry virtually instantly. Or if you take that extra fine nib and write on a coated or a glossy paper like a Rhodia, it's going to take longer to dry. So I don't, I don't know how to define wet or dry ink. Okay. Which I, answer that Uh, i do know the the laban pens i have a laban that i got from you actually bert and it is a broad nib um and it does tend to write a little wet the ink i have in there the last ink i had in there was a jihur band so marion i don't know if that helps you but um 
You now this actually leads me to another question. Do you offer samples of ink for sale or do no. you if somebody comes in if they wanted a sample of something could they get that or no? No. No, I actually never did that. I'd be happy to show you any color you want. I'll open up any bottle. Uh but as far okay. as like filling little bottles, yeah, that I that I never did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I Marion, I don't know if you were in that other discussion, but we talked about how the the ink, uh, John Phelan from Lemur was saying how the the ink often complements, you know, the the pen that is made by that company. So if Le Bon's are more more wet, maybe the the ink would be kind of trying to work with that particular pen model. I don't know. That's a good question though. So um, if you want to unmute and ask, you're welcome to do that. Let's see. But. Um, did anybody else have any other questions as well? Uh, you can put them in the chat if you like. Uh, let's see. What else? I do miss being down there. I miss seeing you and you know giving you a hard time. And you, you do oh, get sorry. Text your email. I'm used to it. You're, <laughs> you're, doing, you're doing a fine job. You uh you had the ink swatches card that I kind of cut you off there for a second. You've got that all. Yeah. This is great right. handiwork. Over many, <laughs> many weekends. Yeah. When it was slow, I would start yeah. opening bottles and, and swapping yeah, them. That's how we do it. We just take the piece of paper and we just take it and put it on top of the bottle. And then you get your your swatch right there. And that helps people, you know, see what color, you know, what the ink looks like. Yeah. And I um I used a colo ring that you can buy from several different retailers as well as well appointed desk. Do you carry the color rings for sale? I do not. Okay. We refer Anna to a uh, well appointed desk for that. Yeah. Okay. So um yeah, she sells those as well as I think extra cards and a Rolodex version, which I would personally love to have, but um and I kind of remember harassing you, you know, don't you have an old Rolodex around here? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. One my first mark, my first piece of marketing uh, materials back in the day was uh, my a friend of mine was a printer. who had a family print business and he printed me Rolodex cards. So it was a business card that clipped into the Rolodex with the virtual yeah. tab at the top. So. Oh, that's great. That's remember great. it, but certainly don't have it. Oh man. Those are fabulous. So. Um, well, we're coming up close to five o'clock here. I, I do want to give you an opportunity to, you know, maybe talk to some of the customers you've got in the store and, you know, not take up all your time for the rest of the, you know, how long you're open. Are you closing at five or are you I'm closing, closing at five? On, yeah, nine to six Monday through uh, Friday and okay. ten to five on Saturday, uh, closed on Sunday. But come Thanksgiving, the, the fourth Sundays from Thanksgiving to Christmas will be open on Sunday. Oh, okay. So you'll, and you'll announce that on your website yep. and mm -hmm. social media. Okay. Yep. That's great. That's good to know. So then folks can, you know, if they're able to get out, they can come stop in the shop and, you know, see what oh, kind yeah. of goodies you've got available for sale. So. Yeah. Okay. Six o'clock during the week usually extends past six o'clock. So, you know, it's just guidelines as we call them. <laughs> okay. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you, Bert, so much for your time today. We no, really appreciate it. I was, um, I was nervous about doing it because it, it, you know, I had my we opened at ten on Saturday, and I had my customer waiting for me in the parking lot at nine fifteen. Uh, it really didn't stop until I said goodbye to David at four o'clock, and then fumbled wow. to get on to your meeting. So I'm, I'm glad to be here. I just, you know. It's uh, it's been a it's been a busy day for sure. Well, I that's good to hear. We want you to be busy and selling all the pens and all the ink and all the things. So, well, thanks um, to everybody that's that's in this meeting and others. You know that's 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 how it happens. I'm grateful for every every question, every call, every email, every order. That's for sure. Awesome. So, guys, don't forget you can visit Bertram's Inkwell online at bertramsinkwell.com. And what's the address for the physical store, Bert? Um, 11, 5, 20 Rockville Pike, Suite E, Rockville, Maryland, 2852. We're about seven miles northeast, northwest of Washington, D.C. Okay. And that's just outside the Beltway, the Capitol Beltway? Yeah, a couple of miles outside of the Beltway. Okay. Very good. Very good. Yeah, if you're in and, in and around, uh, you know, that 
the Beltway area. It's it's just come up this you know, a few miles up the street. It's not far. Great. Very good. Okay. Thank you again. Uh, as I mentioned before, we did record this. We will be uploading it to YouTube so you can watch it there. Um, and thanks again to Bert and to Dale, our co-host. And we yes, will see you, you guys tomorrow at the virtual Detroit Pen Show. It was fun. Thank you. Thanks. Take care.